so very good afternoon to everyone i will call this uh, session 10 of sp in this session 10 today we have very special guest for the expert talk question dr sel sir associate professor department of mechanical engineering jc expert talk was university of science and technology wmc farida sir is a passionate and innovative young professional with an exemplary academic record and a passion associate professor department of mechanical engineering personnel and innovative young professional with an exemplary academic record and a passion for continuous Is postdoc in decision science from industrial engineering department. Associate Professor Sir is carrying the responsibilities Start of collector, alumni, and corporate affairs in development. Sir has published more than fifteen such papers in international journals, including journals. So uh, we can. the person for continuous learning and precision science from industrial engineering department vice president industry innovation may you please start your session sir uh, hello good morning to everyone uh this is dr sanjeev goel uh, i hope i am audible to all of you yes sir yes sir okay um uh, mamle sorry um, i took some time from my end to connect over here uh so uh, can we wait for another 4 5 minutes i think the participants are too less now it's 17 18 participants are only so sir so as per your convenience sir and another thing is that uh, uh, is my ppt visible to all yes sir it is visible but it has not been uh, slide shared sir uh, not slide share yes sir no um, uh, uh, aren't you able to see the full screen no sir oh, okay 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 let me see now yes sir now it is okay okay good all right so timing is already 12:05 okay i will be starting the this lecture so uh, myself dr sanjeev goel and uh, it's good good afternoon from my end to everyone uh, so if you have any questions please you can put it on your in the chat and later on after the lecture uh, completion of my lecture i will be taking those questions so uh, my uh, this lecture is entirely based upon the kinematics of the robotic arm uh, there are two other lectures which are planned over here uh, one is uh, by dr anand vaj he will be delivering a lecture on uh, on on bond graphs you have the dynamics of the robotic arm using bond graphs and another one is uh, planned over here by uh, professor vikas ristogi that is again on dynamics of the robotics so i have placed my lecture just before these two lectures just to make you understand how the kinematics is involved in the robotic arm once you are able to understand the kinematics only then you can proceed to the dynamics uh 
so uh, in uh, in this lecture we are going to see uh, the coordinates of the manipulator with respect to the base so uh, whenever you are making some programming with a robotic arm the important thing is that you need to understand you, your robotic system need to have the uh, the uh, point where you have placed your tool the tool can be a paint the tool can be a, can be a welding machine or anything once your uh, robotic arm is able to know where the end effector is then it becomes very very easy to make the program so today in this lecture we will be able to know how to make the robotic arm know where the end effector is with respect to the base like in this first slide you are able to see that uh, the robot robot is there which is asking where is my hand and the direct kinematics tells that this hand is over here So you can see uh, this is uh, this is the end effector for this robot uh, robot and this robot does not know where my end effector is and your kinematics is going to tell where this end effector is all about so this this happens with every robotic arm whenever you are making a program uh, this is a kind of, this is the kinematics which is uh, which is behind that program i must say if you are a robotic programmer then you need not to know about this kinematics you need not to know about the dynamics but if you are an engineer who is uh, who is planning everything who is his who is uh, designing the robotic arm then you need this kinematics and dynamics for a robotic programmer because everything is uh, has already been done in the program in that case you just need to move the robotic end effector to a desired point and then it starts working from there okay so today in today's lecture we'll be discussing about the kinematics of the robotic arm so what is my objective for this lecture is to drive a method to compute the position and orientation of the manipulator's end effector relative to the base of the manipulator as a function of the joint variables okay so we are going to tell where my end effector that is where is my manipulator's end effector manipulator is something which is your application part in the robotic arm it is uh, your your painting gun it is your welding gun or uh, spot welding gun so that is your manipulator and manipulator ka jo end hai the end point that we need to know from the base so that means this is what the kinematics is all about before going into the deeper uh, we must know what is a degree of freedom uh, i just um, throw a question to all of you you can answer that in the chat box uh, if I, if i simply ask what are the degree of freedom of my hand how many degree of freedom my hand has can anyone tell in the chat or you you, you can speak as well because it's a very small group uh, if somebody knows how many degree of freedoms are there in the hand you can tell me this is a very important question very basic and very important as well uh, there are two chat it's 15 from uh, mr badal and uh, okay first it was 6 now it is 15 uh, but the correct answer is 27 so after completion of this lecture just go to the basics and just try to find out how many movement your hand can do uh, your fingers can do because then you will be able to know how many total degree of freedoms your hand has and this these are the total 27 degree of freedom our hand has this the, this this was a question i was asked uh, in the interview so that's why i'm i'm discussing this is a very basic question and it is it usually asked in the interview if you are appearing for the robotics so uh, what do you mean by a degree of freedom it's a independent position variables needed to locate all part of the mechanism different ways in which robot arm can move and its joints so whatever the means flexibility how many movements are possible in a robotic arm we say uh that's many uh, that many degree of freedoms are there in the robotic arm all right okay so if uh, if uh, i'm talking about degree of freedom in a rigid body in a plane then you can have you can see it's a uh, three degree of freedom are there one is along x another one is y and third one is rotation about the z axis so these are the three degree of freedom the body if the body is in the plane similarly in space usually our robotic arms are um, move in a space only 
for our uh, easy for, for making the program easier and to just to pick and place the points in the space so usually uh, because in that case in space we have x y and z three uh, coordinate axes and along the every coordinate axis there is a movement orient uh, revolution movement is there so there is a revolutory move, uh, movement is along x axis then along y axis then along z axis so uh, three translational and three revolutory uh, joints are there so that means total six degree of freedoms are there in the space so three positions and three orientations so as we increase the degree of freedom the positioning accuracy decreases the computational complexity increases the cost increases but at the same time if you increase the degree of freedom definitely that should be in your mind as well the flexibility increases and power transmission also becomes more difficult in that case you need to transmit the power to each and every link and joint so as many degree of freedom increases as many that many links and joints uh, joints will also increase so that means you need to distribute the power to each link and joints so that becomes your power transmission becomes difficult but though your flexibility definitely is going to increase so uh, um, what do you mean by a manipulator is a set of bodies connected in a chain by a joint so uh, joints power giving connection mechanisms are there uh, so end effector perform already i told you what do you mean by a manipulator it is it is a it is something which you need to uh, perform with a robotic arm right painting and or welding and again i'm telling you so um, number of degree of freedom is equal to number of joints then we have a robot joints so you can see we have uh, the first figure over here uh, which is like revolute joints which has one degree of freedom variable theta is only uh, there and uh, this is just a revolute uh, revolute joint is there then we have prismatic joint which moves in a linear uh, path that is only in this direction so that kind of a joint is known as a prismatic joint so we have two kinds of a joint one is a revolute joint another one is a prismatic joint which moves in a linear motion so uh, ultimately um, we will be trying to solve the kinematics for puma 560 uh, at the last in this lecture if it permits the time permits my aim is to make you understand how you can assign a coordinate to this end effector with respect to the base if finally in with respect to puma 560 because puma 560 has six revolute joints it has six degree of freedoms so if you are able to uh, find out the coordinates of x y and z at the end effector of this puma then you will be able to make the kinematic equations for each and every robotic arm possibly right so then we have this uh, the kinematic function of a, of a link is to maintain a fixed relationship between two joint axes if i'm talking about the, this is a joint axis this is a joint axis then this is the link between the two joint axis okay this relationship can be described with two parameters the link length a the link twist alpha okay what do you mean by link length a this is the uh, perpendicular the common perpendicular between the two joint axes this is my uh, joint axis i minus 1 this is my joint axis i what is the common uh, normal between the two joint axes you can see uh, this is this one this is your but so ever this one this is your common normal and the length of this common normal is known as link length okay and how you can measure the twisting angle between the two joint axes right so this is my first joint axis this is my second joint axis if i move this joint axis to this place okay this joint axis if i move over here then you can see that there is a there is a angle between these two and this is known as a twist angle for the link this is denoted by alpha i minus 1 okay just as i move through these uh, this lecture this link length this twisting angle are very very important okay so you need to know you need to understand how to uh, measure the link length the twisting angle the, uh, the theta angle the distance d i will be uh, telling you gradually but please concentrate on these uh, four parameters the two have been told you right now to you one is the link length another one is the 
link twist angle once you are able to understand these then it becomes very very easy to uh, find out the dh parameter which is my main aim of this lecture all right again a, a beautiful diagram has been shown to you where it is very very much clear uh, you have this joint axis i minus 1 then this is another joint axis i so if i move this to this place this one then this is my twisting angle and the common normal between the two joint axis is the link length okay i hope these two parameters are clear to you the link length and the twist all right so then we have a joint parameters you just have seen the link parameters now we are moving towards the joint parameters so these are the two another or the two left over uh, parameter which you need to know uh, just to uh, prepare yourself for the dh parameter so the relative position of two links is known as link offset all right i will tell you uh, just uh, in the in the next slide means how to measure this distance dn this is this is a linear distance okay like in the previous uh, link parameter there was a linear distance which was a that was for link length now there is a link offset that means uh, if suppose um, this is measured along x axis so that means if there is a z axis and another z axis is, is is offset is it is not intersecting at the same point the two are at uh, are intersecting with each other uh, are not intersecting but they have some offset with with uh, the two joint axis then the that offset is known as a dn i will show you in the next slide means how to go about this dn then another important thing that is a joint angle theta n right so this joint angle theta n will going to tell you how many degree of freedom your uh, robotic arm has like i have given you the an example of puma 560 where uh, there are six degree of freedoms are there so that means six revolutory joints are there and those joints are nothing uh, moving but with respect to each other but they are just moving uh, these joint angle theta n right there is a theta 1 between the first joint and the second joint sorry 0 and 1 then 1 and 2 theta 2 is there so uh, like this so we have six joint angles over there so they are moving relative to each other which are giving six degree of freedom to the puma 560 okay now i think all the four parameters are shown over here in this diagram uh, you can see that already two have been made clear to you i am talking about now the axis the offset d all right so you can see that the origin for this first first joint axis is over here while the origin for the second joint axis is been made over here so that means there is some distance uh, between the two right along the x axis so we need to make the x axis so this is the x axis this one this one okay this is the x axis for the link i for the joint i this is the x axis for the joint i minus 1 so what i need to do i need to just move this vector to this position then both are uh, at the same level then there is some distance apart between the two axes two x the x of the uh, axis i x of the axis i minus 1 there is some offset involved over here and this offset is nothing but a d so always the offset distance is measured relative relative to the 2x axis okay the x axis of the i x axis of the i minus 1 unke beech ka jo distance hai whatever the distance is there in between the two axis that is nothing but a offset all right similarly uh, we need to measure the angle theta so again theta is what you have this uh, again you have this axis uh, this is the x uh, coordinate of joint i all right and this is the x coordinate of the axis i minus 1 so whatever the angle between these two x axis that is known as the uh, angle theta 
all right so these two parameters in case of joint are measured between the x axis of the two axis right so here it is always measured with respect to x but with respect to uh, g axis okay because this is nothing but your z axis so z axis ke with respect to uh, we need to see how the two axes are uh, having a angle between them all right so that things will be more clear if we move further so now we have all the four uh, parameters over here the link length a the twist angle uh, link twist alpha uh, i minus 1 we have the offset d and the angle joint angle theta so all these four parameters are needed then we can design our kinematics then we will be able to know the end effector position with respect to the base all right again those uh, because the stress is entirely upon knowing these four parameters so four parameters are associated with each link you can align the two axes using these parameters the an is nothing but the length of the link a alpha n is a twist angle between the joint axes similarly theta n is the angle between the links and dn is a distance between the links so these four parameters are all right so further uh, this is further uh, description of knowing all the four parameters you can see the diagram over here on the screen uh, again it has been shown with some kind of almost a real kind of a situation uh, you can see that there is axis i minus 1 this is a this is your axis i there is a twist alpha i minus 1 then there is a common normal between the two z axis and this common normal the length of this common normal is alpha i minus 1 there then there is a offset between the x axis of i minus 1 and x axis of i and the distance between them is known as a d this is known as the offset similarly the twist angle theta is the sorry the angle joint angle theta is also there which i already have shown you in the previous diagram so uh, another um, means just to make you more understand these are the special cases which you may encounter that make your life more uh, easy over here if joint axis just try to imagine the things if joint axis uh, z uh, i minus 1 and z i intersect all right if i go to the previous slide uh, this one agar ye z axis or this z axis if they intersect with each other instead of at some distance about what would happen it's very obvious that this length, link length will be equal to zero all right so this is just a just a derivation of the simple concepts so in that case your parameter ai will be equal to 0 if the common perpendicular to z i minus 1 and z i intersect z i minus 1 at the origin of frame that means there is no offset is there okay then your d will be equal to 0 all right if joint axes are parallel then angle ai will be equal to 0 means there is no twist link twist is there these are just a uh, simple observations from the previous uh, definitions now we have a fixing frames to links the z axis uh, is coincident with the joint axis i how to fix various frames uh, the z axis is uh, the z axis is coincident with the joint axis i hi uh, nitin uh, you can ask me the question you you can ask me question Oh, okay badal you, uh, you can record if you want uh, i don't know means how to permit that uh, all right nitin uh, you have raised the hand do you have any question uh, all right um, nitin you can put your question in the chat okay uh, uh, after the completion of this lecture i will be coming back to you all right the z axis is coincident with the joint axis i the origin of frame is located where ai perpendicular intersects with the joint i axis all right uh, i will tell you in detail about how to place the coordinates that's the most important thing once you are you are able to place the place the uh, z axis x axis y axis on every joint then your life becomes very very easy just to you need to understand and then you can make your dh parameter matrix once you are ready with your dh parameter matrix then it's a, just a fun to know the coordinates of the end effector so the main uh, thing behind that's why i'm putting so much stress 
on these axes, how they are placed, how the different different angles are measured. Because after that, it's just a cakewalk. The origin of frame is located where AI perpendicular intersects the joint I axis. The X axis points along AI. Always remember this thing. The X axis points along AI. What was AI? AI was the common normal between the two Z axis. So once you have drawn a common normal, then you need to place an axis X axis along the AI. And where your Z axis will be placed, Z axis will always be coincident with the joint axis I. Okay, so now you have already defined two axes out of the three. You have three coordinate axes, X, Y, and Z. All right, so Z axis is along the axis. Uh, always uh, means Z axis you can understand like this the axis about which the revolution is happening. Okay, if I say I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if I'm visible to you while I'm sharing the screen, I don't know. Uh, but if you have an axis, this, this G, the Z axis is that axis about which the revolution happens. All right, and X axis is always along the uh, common normal between the two Z axis or yeah, two Z axis. So once you are able to make the Z axis and X axis, then you can easily find the Y axis by using a right hand thumb rule. All right. So by that way, you will be able to place the X, Y and Z at every joint origin. Okay. So ye, uh, you will be able to know all these things from this. Okay. And I move to the next. You can see uh, this diagram looks somewhat complicated, but it is not that because over here I have taken a three joints. Earlier I was just concentrating upon two joints. Now I've just added one more joint over here uh, so that you will be able to know uh, the, uh, the, the uh, various links, uh, various axes, how they are being placed. All right. So if I'm talking about joint N minus one, I'm just considering that this joint n minus one is a revolutory joints is having a revolution and this revolution is happening along joint axis n minus one so once i have decided my joint axis then easily i can place z n minus one along the uh, joint axis all right and how uh, 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 but i have told you about xn minus one how this is being placed this is placed along the common normal between the between the two z axis these, these are my two z axis and this is my common normal between the two all right so uh, this, the link length will be equal to a n minus one but because i'm not talking about the link length over here i'm just placing my coordinates so x n minus one will be placed along this a n minus one all right so now you already have decided about z n minus one x n minus one now what you need to need to do about to uh, uh, to find the y axis you will be using a right hand thumb rule you will be moving your finger from z axis towards x axis and your thumb will give you the direction of y axis all right so that is your uh, right hand thumb rule so by using this with the origin you have already defined the directions of xn minus 1 zn minus 1 yn minus 1 and one thing i tell you you make to make your life easier is that uh, if suppose um, your direction i'm not talking about the length uh, not talking about the axis if your direction is just uh, actual direction just opposite to what you have decided like over here, if you are able to see, uh, I have shown that my x axis is, 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 is from n minus 1 towards n. But somehow, if you have placed this x axis in this direction, then you need not to worry about it. Your dh parameter matrix will take care of this. Um, only thing is that at the end, when your coordinates are, uh, you will be able to, the final coordinates are there in your hand, then automatically a negative sign will appear, which will tell you that whatever the direction that you have chosen for x axis, the actual direction is just opposite to that. All right. So don't worry about it. But yes, you need to know the, uh, the axis about which your x axis has been placed. That must be there, the line of action. Okay. All right, so next I move to the next joint axis, which is my joint N. So if you can see that over here in joint axis, uh, again, the Z axis is, uh, is an axis about which a revolution is happening. And uh, XN is uh, just along the common normal. 
uh, which is an is the link, link length and how to find out y axis by using a right hand thumb rule and what is dn it is the offset between the two uh, x axis okay this was the uh, this was the uh, taken from the previous joint axis this is taken from the joint end and the distance between the two is nothing but a offset so this is how you have uh, you can place your various parameters uh, of the different joint axis all right so i'm not going into uh, all right so one thing that you need to know ai is always constant and positive ai is always chosen positive with the smallest possible magnitude so hamare paas whatsoever we have in the four parameters the offset is if if the joint is not prismatic if the joint is not prismatic in that case your a and d both will be constant i hope you can uh, understand or visualize this thing if the joint is prismatic in that case your d distance can vary all right but if i'm talking about a puma 560 where all the joints are revolutory joints there your d and a both will be constant but yes a will always be constant what is a because a is a link length and link length is not going to change because this is a uh, this is a rigid body this is the length of the rigid body that is not going to change it is not going to affect with the uh with the uh, whether the joint is a prismatic or whether it is a revolutory joints so your a will always be constant d is only constant when the joint is revolutory joints uh, otherwise d will be variable if it's a prismatic joints but otherwise your alpha and thetas they will always be variable that depends upon how many degree of freedom you have as many as degree of freedom you have as many as you have the thetas and alphas okay all right then we have a kinematic model so um, the robot can now be kinematically modeled by using the link transformers uh, transforms that is um, like what do you mean by zero and n n is the coordinate of the end effector what is zero zero is the coordinate of the base in any robotic arm you go to any robotic arm on a shop floor wherever you go the robotic arm is only know where its base is the only um, helpful point is there in the in the shop floors where the robotic programmers are there uh, they they need not to know about the kinematics and dynamics what they do they took the robotic arms end effector to the desired point and your robotic arm knows uh, from there on where the uh, where the end effector is so that is uh, that is a, something beyond this lecture that is about the programming so how we have achieved this from 0 to n first we have a transformation matrix for one suppose i have six degree of freedom i have a six joints what do uh, what will be my one it is it will be transformation from 0 to 1 what will be my second matrix it will be transformation from 1 to 2 what will be my third transformation matrix it will be 2 uh, to 3 so that way i will have six different matrices transformation matrices multiplication of all those six matrices is going to give me me the desired result which is the coordinate of the end effector by using this formula so this is my kinematic model all right i hope this is clear to and is the number of links i told you if i have six links then this is how i can achieve over here all right so now we are into uh, the real thing which is the dynamite hartenberg representation Uh, almost universally it is adopted and uh, professor anand waj will be taking the lecture how to find out dh parameters by using bond graphs that is a new uh, means uh, things are going uh, where uh, you are able to find out the dh parameters for the by using bond graphs but over here in my lecture i am telling you about the fundamentals of dh parameters all right so uh, the appeal of the dh representation lies in the algorithm uh, approach the method begins with systematic approach of assigning and labeling an orthonormal coordinate system i already already told you the first and foremost thing that you need to do is about assigning the orthonormal coordinate system to each robot joint which i already told you how to place a z how to place a x how to find a y already i told you it is then possible to relate one joint to the next what do you mean by relate relate means we will be able to know the angles between the two joints the alphas the thetas the offset then you will be able to know from there and ultimately to assemble a complete representation of a robot geometry okay 
So this is already um, covered in the previous slides. Again, the same figure which you already have seen, uh, it is repetitive. So I'm not going to uh, discuss this further. All right, this is, uh, this is another good diagram uh, which tell you about how to calculate theta, how to calculate alpha, and how to calculate offsets. So this, these are the two joints you are able to see over here. And along the joints, you have this Z, uh, Z axis. This is also a Z axis. You can see this is I, this is I plus one, or this is I minus one or I whatsoever name you want to do. Okay, they have taken it as I, I minus one. You can take it as I minus one and you can take this as I. So this is Z uh, I minus one, which is along the axis about which the rotation is happening. This is uh, axis Z I about which the rotation is happening over here. All right, then uh, we say, I told you the offset. Offset is always a distance between the two X axis. You can see that over here, the X axis is along this, which is I minus one over here, um, which has been uh, means just moved over here. And then this is another axis, which is uh, X I. So angle between them is theta I and the distance between the two X axis is your D, D I. All right, so you have offset, you have zi minus one, you have xi minus one, you have a theta. Theta is a angle between the two x axis measured along z axis. Okay, so zk along kitna wo movement there hai. So that is how the angle theta is measured. And alpha angle is always a twist angle. These, this angle alpha is measured between two z axis along x axis. So suppose this is my z axis, this is my z axis. The angle between the two z axis is known as alpha, and this is uh, measured uh, along x axis. Theta is measured between two x axis along z axis, while alpha is measured between two z axis along x axis. So you might, you should remember this all, right? So this is might be uh, clear to you now. Ai it is a distance from z i to z i minus one measured along x i. X I. Please remember, this is the most important slide in whole of this my presentation. Because if you are able to understand AI, alpha, DI, theta, then means it's very easy to um, means find out these four parameters. Then alpha I is the angle between ZI and ZI plus one measured along XI. Similarly, DI is the distance from XI minus one to XI measured along zi this is what i was telling you that the theta is the angle between x i minus one to x i measured along zi please take a screenshot of this this is very helpful slide which is means going to tell you about all the four parameters all right uh, start at the base and assign frames pick x axis and origin y axis chosen to form a right hand system Consider three cases from ZI minus one and ZI. These are obvious cases, not coplanar. Uh, in in um, um, what would happen in not uh, not coplanar? What would happen in a parallel? Uh, if the two Z axes are parallel to each other, if they intersect with each other, what, uh, what is going to happen? This is, I think, obvious if you try to visualize the things in advance. So if I'm talking about ZI minus one and ZI are not coplanar. Okay, you can see the diagram over here. They are not coplanar. Uh, so common normal to access is the link axis already told you and intersection with zi is origin so that creates your origin and is uh, x i points from i minus one to i so already everything is uh, made clear to you so in this case both the axes are parallel so when the axes are parallel you have infinitely many common normals in the previous case when they, they were not coplanar in that case, you were having only one common normal. Your life was easy. But over here, your ZI and ZI minus one are parallel. So you can have numerous common normals because both are parallel to each other. So then you have to choose normal that passes through origin of frame pointing towards ZI. Okay, this is the main rule. Choose a normal that passes through origin of frame pointing towards ZI, or is an intersection of XI with ZI, that is a fundamental thing, which is there in every slide. All right, and the third thing is, uh, they have they are intersecting about over here, 
you can see the two axes which are at normal to each other and how to go about xi you can have a cross product of the two axes and uh, either plus or a minus i already told you you can take any direction later on once you are able to find out the coordinates of the end effector then automatically minus sign will indicate that whatever the direction of x you have chosen it actual direction is opposite to the uh, chosen one all right so this this is the case of intersection all right you need to do this uh, already i explained everything about it this is already explained to you all right uh, in dh uh, convention a general transformation um, um, general transformation between two bodies is defined as a product of four basic transformations um, so you have a translation along the initial z axis by d means all those four four parameters a rotation about the initial z axis by theta a translation along the new x axis by a and a rotation about the new x axis by alpha right means what do you mean by these four things because you already have one axis okay what do you want to do you want to transfer transfer your coordinates from the previous axis to the new axis right whenever you're transferring your uh, coordinates from the previous axis to the new axis you have four parameters right either the new axis is at some uh, distance apart at some offset d it has some uh, twist angle alpha it is having a link length a it is having a uh, your angle uh, joint angle as theta so keeping all those four parameters i'm assuming that all four parameters are existing over here but if you are um, this is this is a just an ideal case in actual case what happens you all out of the four uh, parameters in most of the time you have only two or one or two parameters uh, changing from one uh, link to another link but over here i am just considering all the four possibilities that is while moving from previous link to the new link a translation is happening we need to do a translation along d we have to we have to do a rotation about z axis a translation along the link length and a rotation about the alpha if i do all those four transformations that means if the four transformations are existing then i will be reaching to the new coordinate axis how these four transformations will be dealt with they will be dealt through the transformation matrix which i told you in the beginning that i need to have a transformation matrix between the two joint axis and i keep on keep on multiplying ultimately i reach to the end effector all right uh, this is just a, uh, what do you what uh, is this this is your transformation matrix this is from uh, i minus 1 to i from previous link to new link so you need to take care of all the four parameters uh, if they exist all four yeah this is another very good example uh, you are moving from i to i plus 1 from the previous link to the new link uh what do you need to have you have four parameters right t z theta t z d okay then along x there is a link length then along x there is a alpha so already i told you i need to have these four transformation matrices multiplied with each other to give you a movement from the previous axis to the new axis so i'm talking about the first transformation matrix which is t z theta this is my first transformation matrix this is um, you already know if i'm if i'm uh, doing the rotation about z axis then i need to keep my x y z the third one as one uh, this is identity matrix 0 0 0 and this is 0 0 0 1 these uh, this is just taken from there you need to take that axis as one wherever you are making your rotation here rotation is about z so this is about one and then your cos theta minus sin theta sin theta and cos theta i hope you all know these transformation matrices this is not uh, this part of this lecture uh, to explain about transformation matrices i hope you all already know uh, and then you need to have this translation along d which is a offset all right so in that case your last vector this one this is the only important vector where your translation is going to happen though these two different matrices have been shown to you but these two in, uh, can be incorporated into one only if i just replace this the first matrix uh, over here this element by di right 
then I need not to have this matrix. My first matrix will do transformation as well as uh, translation along D. So first matrix is sufficient enough to do that. Similarly, the third matrix can easily incorporate it into the first one if I simply replace the first element by AI. Okay, why the first element has been put AI? Because this is the link length along X and first line is about X. So if I'm doing any translational transformation, then the my last uh, column is going to help me. Wherever I'm doing that translation, when I'm doing translation along X axis, my first element will change according to that. If I'm doing translation along Z axis, my third element will change according to that. If I'm doing translation along Y axis, my second element will change according to that. So my translation and my transfer, my rotation, they both can be incorporated into one. But yes, rotation can't be uh, taken into single one. So the third one is rotation about X axis. I told you if I'm doing a rotation about X axis, my element will be taken as one over here. So this is one, zero, 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 zero. And these will become cos theta minus sin theta, sin theta and cos theta. This, this, these two uh, uh, column and this row will remain as it is that was in the previous case. So these two matrices, this one and this one can be incorporated into one, but the last you need to have a separate one. Then you need to multiply all those four all these four transformation matrix and you can have your final matrix over here which is a transformation from link i to link i plus one so you can easily see that if you are able to know the a's the d's the thetas then alphas then easily you can transfer your x axis your axis from previous link to the new new link so this is the ultimate result that you have over here all right, so now we have an example, which is an academic uh, manipulator. These are three revolutory joints. Mind it, revolutory joints are there. So that means uh, your A's and D's, if they exist over here, those will be constants. So we have considered that uh, the joint one, right? So this is a revolution is happening in this direction. And this is nothing but my Z axis. Simil similarly, uh, this is, uh, there is a revolution about this, like this. This is my Z axis. This is a revolution again about this axis. This is my Z axis. So I have Z axis one, two, three. Uh, this is a link three. This is link two. This is link one. So we have all the things presented over here. All right. So we have Z i is axis of actuation for joint i plus one. Z naught and Z one are not coplanar. You can easily see that Z naught and Z1, they are not coplanar. So Z1 is rotating, it is rotating, uh, that is theta one, somewhere means you can see have X and somewhere there's a X I, this is I plus one. So there is some angle involved over here. So that's why theta one, theta two and theta threes are given, but Z1 and Z2 are parallel with each other. All right, so Z1 and Z2 are not coplanar. X naught is a common normal, so you have this, twisting angle theta one over here, twisting angle theta two and twisting angle theta three. So now you have placed your X. So over here, you can see that X naught is placed over here. X one is placed over here and X two is placed over here because it's a, along the common normal from one Z axis to the another Z axis. And this is how your Y has been decided by right hand thumb rule. So all the coordinates have been placed here. All right. So Z1 and Z2 are parallel. X1 is selected as a common normal that lies along the center of the link because in a common, uh, in, a, in, a, in a parallel case, your X1 is placed along the reason, along the common normal between the two axes. Already I told you about it. So this is just another position um, shown with the joints and non-zero position. Uh, you can see that uh, different angles um, from X1 X1 to uh, X0 to X1, this is your angle theta one. This is measured along Z0, uh, X0. And this similarly X1 to X2, you have another angle, this one, this one angle, this is theta two. Similarly, theta, uh, X2 to X3, this is the angle theta three. So you have theta ones, theta two, theta three, uh, all these three, uh, three angles have been shown to you. 
so alpha one is 90 degree you can easily see that if i if i move this z z1 to this uh, point then you can see that my alpha one is 90 degree because these two are parallel to each other there is no twist at all so that means i don't have any further alphas with me i have only one alpha which is equal to 90 degree that is the link twist between z0 and z1 so uh, after knowing all these parameters uh, what i have i have my dh uh, which is nothing but this is this is my dh equation this is theta this is d this is alpha this is a these are the four parameters on this side i have three links one two and three i have a variables theta one theta two theta three why i have written as a variables because this has the three revolutory joints so theta is theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. D, there is no offset. You can see that all axes, all horizons are lying along a single line. So Ds are going to be equal to 0. Alpha is only existing one time, which is equal to 90 degree between Z0 and Z1. Similarly, A's I have first as R. R is the distance between Z0 and Z1. And L1 is the distance between this and this axis. Similarly, L2 is the distance between Z2 and Z3. So this is how your um, this uh, DH parameter matrix is completed. All right. Once you are able to know your parameters, then you already have found the how to uh, go about a transformation from link I to link I minus one. I just need to replace uh, the various values in this in this matrix. And then you will be able to, these are the different uh, uh, transformation matrix from 1 to uh, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Uh, you already have for link 1, uh, what are the various values? Theta 1, 0, 90 degree R. So whatever, wherever theta is coming, you can replace that by theta 1. Wherever D is coming over here, it will be placed as 0. Wherever nine, uh, alpha is coming, it is replaced with a 90 degree. And wherever A is coming, it is replaced with a R. So by just replacing this for the first link, uh, this is my first transformation matrix. Similarly for the second, similarly for the third, what I need to do, I need to multiply all these three and I will be able to find out my first coordinate system. All right, so this is my final uh, transformation matrix, starting with this, uh, this uh, you can say the final uh, big uh, transformation matrix over here. C theta is cos theta, so that is obvious. Uh, C theta 2, 3, obviously you know that that is a cos theta 2 plus cos theta 3. Similarly, S theta 2, 3 is sine theta 2 plus sine theta 3. So you can easily know all those things. Uh, this is another example, but the case is similar. Joint 1, joint 2, joint 3. The only thing is that over here some values are given to you. And uh, again, you can apply that transformation matrix and you can have your all the three transformation matrix. You can do that. Now, we'll take up this a uh, real problem, which is a Puma 560. All right. So I told you, if you are able to uh, know uh, the things about Puma 560, you are able to find out the kinematics of Puma 516 then I don't think you won't be able to uh, make it the kinematics for any Robotica. All right. So we'll try to discuss this. Just have a patience. Try to understand. Move with me uh, through, the, uh, through the things. Then you'll be able to uh, make the DH parameters. Okay. All right. I hope this screen is visible to you. This is a limitation with online teaching. I don't have that paper pen facility or chalkboard facility over here. Um, I don't know how much it is visible. Let me see. I can't do anything about it. Uh, is it. Is it visible? I've tried to make you visualize. Okay. We'll try to see. Okay. Don't think it has a, that much complicated. This is not that much complicated. Okay. It's very easy. We'll move one by one. All right. This is my uh, Puma robotic arm. 560 robotic arm. Uh, this is my link 0. This is my link 1. 0 and 1. Both are fixed. Then this is my link one. This is my link two. This one. This is my link three. This is my fourth link. This one. You were able to see this one. All right. This. This is my fourth. This is my fourth link. Then this one. Uh, this this is my fifth link fifth link and this is the gripper which is my sixth link okay 
so you uh, have six links over here or with the base you can say seven so this is zero one two three four this is five this is six all right uh so uh, what you need to do is you need to assign the different axis all right so first of all what i'll do i assign z axis at every link okay so i have six links हेलो I think due to network problems that is disconnected but I am contacting he will be join soon audio is still not connected so i request you to wait for a minute yes sir you are connected now yes sir i am i'm just coming back all right all right so i was telling you that uh, we have uh, different links 0 1 2 3 uh, 4 5 and 
these are the six links we have with us all right and uh, um, i uh, i was telling you that uh, because zero and one both are fixed so you can just place z1 and z0 both along the same axis and then uh, you need to have your z2 so z2 is a is a is a is a link which is rotating about this like this this link so along so that means you have your z2 as along this line similarly this link uh, link number 3 this is rotating like this like this so that means you you can place your z3 along this similarly um, you, you can place your z4 z4 is something uh, uh, dimish am, uh, am i visible i don't know about it um, am, am i visible because i just want to show a movement um, through the pen or something okay if i'm not visible then it's completely okay so we have this 4 and 5 both the links are um, uh, uh, you uh, you can you can imagine like this the link 4 is there this is link 5 this is link 6 okay so link 4 is a rotation about z axis link 5 uh, you can imagine link 5 is a rotation about y axis and link 6 is a rotation about x axis so you have three translational and three rotational nahi aa rahi aawaz तो वी हैव दीज थ्री लिंक्स लिंक फोर लिंक फाइव एंड लिंक सिक्स दीज आर द रोटेशन फोर फाइव सिक्स विच आर गिविंग द थ्री रोटेशन अबाउट थ्री एक्सेस एक्स वाई एंड जेड और राइट सो वी हैव प्लेस जेड फोर जेड सिक्स एंड जेड फाइव इज अलॉन्ग दिस so we have z1 z0 z2 z3 z5 z4 z6 and we need to have z7 because uh, i will tell you later on why i have kept z7 over here then i need to place my x axis all right so x axis uh, how i can place x axis it is along the common normal between the first z axis to the second z axis uh, so that means uh, if if i am talking about x1 this is from uh, 1 to 2 this is along x1 similarly 2 to 3 x2 is along this similarly if i move from 3 to 4 my x axis is obviously along this if i'm talking about from 4 to 5 my x4 is along this similarly uh, 5 to 6 again my x5 is along this from 6 to 7 that's why i have kept z7 over here that will again will be along x7 so i have placed x axis i have placed z axis and if i want to find y axis i can use my right hand thumb rule i can place that as well all right so i have chosen a coordinate axis 0 1 and 2 which is along this and uh, my another coordinate axis is 4 5 6 so i have coordinate axis 0 1 and 2 over here and similarly i can place another coordinate system over here which is equal to 4 5 and 6 so i have two coordinate systems so now already i told you what is the angle between x0 and x1 that will be equal to theta1 similarly angle between x1 and x2 will be equal to theta2 angle between x2 and x3 will be equal to theta3 how x2 is measured uh, that is from z2 to z3 if i am measuring x2 already i told you this thing similarly the distance between x2 and x3 uh x2 and x3 all right so this uh just hold on uh what about your d3 d3 is a is a distance um you you, you can imagine d3 is a distance between x2 and x3 if i'm talking about this as x2 this as x2 and this as x3 all right this as x3 this as x2 then i am assuming that there is some offset is there between these two x axis x2 and x3 and this offset is nothing but d3 all right d4 is clearly visible to you if i am talking about this as my x3 this as my x4 then the distance between these two will be equal to nothing but d4 
all right so i have d3 and d4 all other d's in uh, in uh, all the six joints all other d's will be equal to 0 0 0 0 0 okay so i have only two offsets over here between x2 and x3 and x3 and x4 otherwise you can see that x4 x5 x5 x6 they all lie along single line similarly x0 x1 x2 they uh, all lie along single line so there won't be any offset between between these the x axis the only offset is between over here all right okay uh, so then I need to find out A2, A's and uh, A2 and A3. Okay, what was A2 and A3? It was the link length. Okay, so you can imagine that uh, the link length only exists over here and over here. Otherwise, the link length is between two, between two uh, distance between two Z axes. Okay, so here Z1 and Z0 both lie along the single axis. So there won't be so only link length is along from 2 to 3 and 3 to 4. Again, 4, 5 and 6, uh, 4, 6 and 7. All these three Zs lie along single line. So there won't be any distance between them. So that means I have only two A's with me. One is A2, another one is A3. Okay, just try to understand again. A's are the distance between two Z. Okay. So Z1 and Z0 both lie along single line. So there won't be any A. If I'm talking about from 2 to 3, Z2 and Z3, there is some distance involved. That is nothing but the link length. So I have written it as a A2. All right. Then moving from this to this, the Z axis are parallel with each other. Z3 and Z5, they are parallel with each other. So that means uh, over here, if I'm moving, I won't have A, but if I see the top view or the side view of this, the, these joints, four, five, and six over here, you can see that this center line is about the Z4 and this circle is about Z5. So there is some distance between these two Z axes and that is nothing but A3. We are just assuming that they might lie on a single line. So uh, in that case, A3 will be zero. But just to make a generalized case, we are considering A3 over here. So we have only two entries over here, A2 and A3. Other entries of A will be equal to zero. All right. Similarly, if I'm talking about the last column, which is about thetas. So because it's a Puma, Puma is a six degree of freedom robotic arm, which has all the six rotations possible. So definitely it has thetas available, theta variable available at every link, every joint, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, theta 5, theta 6. Okay, so only I left with the twist angle. So as you can see that Z1 and Z0 both coincide. So my twist angle will be equal to 0. If I'm talking about Z1 and Z2, you can see that there is angle 90 degree involved. So I'm just assuming that minus pi by two, it can be a positive pi by two as well, which I already told you if I'm trying to find out the final coordinates that will be taken care of automatically. Similarly, Z2 and Z3, both are parallel axis. Again, it is equal to zero. If I'm talking about three to four, there is angle 90 degree involved. So that's why it is 90 degree. Similarly, five and six. So you have all the four parameters available with you. Uh, which you can play with now. So now you have six transformation matrices matrices over here. Uh, already I told you how to go about the transform uh, transformation matrices. All those transformation matrices have been placed over here. You need not you need to just multiply this and then you can have the final coordinate system for you. All right. Uh, so um, Rimlesh, I will be stopping over here. Because that would be too much uh, in, a, in a single lecture. Uh, all right. So, Vimlesh, uh, are you there? Vimlesh?
we are very sorry due to uh, uh, bad network connection uh, so there has lost the connection so attendance link for this session i am sharing the link for attendance uh, please wait here and uh, mark your attendance So I have shared the attendance link. Please mark your attendance. And uh, so we had another session on the last day, Saturday. So the remaining part of this session will also be discussed on that session. And due to network connection, uh, so anyone can unmute or uh, can say, uh, are you able to mark your attendance? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, uh, due to bad weather today and heavy rains, there is a problem of network. So, the remaining part, uh, the 15 minutes uh, which left today, we'll try to uh, combine that part in the session on Saturday. Sorry for the inconvenience. So I'm not concluding the session. I'm uh, waiting for your uh, attendance. So please mark your attendance. So till now we have completed the 10th session. So uh, if you, uh, if you, uh, could give uh, you can give any suggestions regarding the sessions. You have the access to one minute yourself, and you can say if you want to say something. Excuse me, sir. sir it, uh, is it possible for you to share all the sessions PPT? Uh, we have requested to all the this, uh, respected speakers. And uh, one uh, speaker has shared the PPT, Dr. Shiv Sarmaji, and I will share that PPT in the group. And as soon as the PPT will be received, the same PPT will be shared in, the, in your group, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, I, expect, uh, I request you also, because it is also on the, um, uh, on the part of uh, our uh, participant that you in the chat box while during the session you can request a speaker for the same so if you request it will be more uh, valuable and if the speaker share to us we will share to you so in the next session whichever it is required you may please ask the speaker through the chat box we will also ask but your request will be more uh, valuable Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So everyone present here has marked the attendance. Should I close? Everyone has marked the attendance? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs>
सो मे आई एंड द मीटिंग नाउ मे आई एंड द मीटिंग नाउ एनी वन प्लीज जी के किया है